He's in. Hello, can you hear me? This is oh, I can't hear you though. This is weird. Hello. Oh, now it's all good. Look. Hi. Hi. I'm going to put this onto gallery view so I can. Okay. Tell me, how are you? This is lovely. Where are you? Well, not surprisingly, I'm at home. How about where, where you? Is, where in your home, though? This is my office. I have a. I live in a Victorian house, so this is like the upstairs single bedroom area. Yeah. But it's been an office for many years, don't you see? It's just full of... Yeah, lots and lots of very well filed things. Good oh, natural light. Good. Check this out, this is my last King Singers gig. Was that in Siena? Siena, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, I can. That's really fun. What else do you have from sort of what, in terms of King Singers memorabilia on the wall? Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> what was the one to the left? Of that. Oh, that's the Acapella Fellas. The Acapella Fellas. Wow, I don't think I've seen this. No, well, maybe I have seen the photo, but not with not with that title. Tell me about it. We did a gig in um that was for nineteen ninety five, when you were probably just about in nursery school or something. Uh what in nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five I just finished at the German school. I was eight. And I okay. And I, yeah, moved them with my parents down to Sussex where my dad was a teacher. Where, yeah. In 1995, where, where were you at that stage in life? So that was a gig in um, Middlebury, Vermont. Yeah. Which is where Christina, to whom I was engaged then. Yeah. Was I engaged? Yeah, she went to school in Middlebury. So yeah. uh, we've, I would, basically that group of people, we wanted to go to do some singing, the acapella fellas. We went to do some skiing in Vermont and had a gig thrown in. That's, That's it. So that was fun. such a long time ago. I mean, all those people, I'm still friends with all those people. Who Very are they? Famous. Do I know any of those names? Well, you would know Bertie Rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, My Dan, Norman, yeah. Dan Norman. Yeah. Dan Norman. Nick Smith. Whom I don't know. Nick Herndall Smith, tenor. Lovely. Um, uh, Johnny Wicks. Do you know Johnny okay. Wicks? I don't, but I, I will find out very much very soon, I'm sure. And Patrick Craig. Okay, amazing. <laughs> that is so, f yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so fun. He was my how best man at the wedding. How much singing did you do, like in, in, in groups like this, between Kings and the King Singers? Like how, how many acapella groups were you in? Uh, well, I was in. The acapella was quite a new one. I was also in something called the Cambridge Scholars. Great. Which was, we, I remember we had a lovely trip to Scotland. Yeah. To do all of these things. You know, it, it was like being in the, it was like a King Singers clone group. It was Renaissance music finishing with pop songs. That's what oh, I, I had. I, I was in the same thing and I didn't realize. Um, a friend of mine called Johnny, um, as it happens, um, oh. arranged for us to sing at the wedding of a classics fellow from Magdalen, where he was a student. This is obviously in Oxford. And so yeah. he got a group of six of us together because everything, of course, is arranged for six parts because it's all arranged for the King Singers. Um, yeah. It was called the Oxford Clarks. So in terms of <laughs> being the exact blueprint of the Cambridge Scholars with a slightly different name, I'm sure it was exactly yeah. the same. And we yeah. did sort of concerts in quaint English villages with nice parish churches. And yeah. Um, twice we tried to do concerts in Berlin. We had a kind of a, uh, an interesting man um, with a very funny record label decided he wanted to put out a CD of our music. And so we, two CDs did come out on a very weird label. Uh, and we were meant to do, we were meant to do launch concerts for a Christmas CD in Berlin two years in a row. And both years, something odd happened. So I think, um, I think both years it was to do with snow, but uh, I remember very clearly the second time we were meant to fly out of Gatwick and then that was cancelled. So we had to go to Luton, that was cancelled. Then we go to Bristol, that was cancelled. All this is all in one day. And then we got on a ferry at like, I don't know, 9 p.m. to Calais from Dover. Um, to, or, uh, yeah, but we were at, as foot passengers and then we were being picked up by taxi to drive to oh Berlin to do this concert the next day. And we got, we got to... Um, 
we got to Calais and the taxi was going to pick us up. Six guys all with suitcases. There was, it was one taxi. We'd have had to sleep with our suitcases on our knees for 12 hours. We just said, look, this, this is too much. We're not doing this. So the concerts never happened. Um, although I, I weirdly went to the 10th anniversary concert of the Oxford Clarks last January. And uh, yeah, not much has changed. Not much of the repertoire has changed. But um, was it the Clarks who got quite a lot of coverage for like doing video stuff on YouTube, and they got some videos. Is I that, think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not me. Oh, is, but, that, yeah. the gar- oh, is that the Gargoyles? Oh no, the, no. I see what you're saying. That the Gargoyles definitely have done more. That that's yeah. like a proper Oxford staple yeah. a cappella group. Um, yeah. But yeah, what what was funny when I went to this ten year reunion is I saw friends of mine who were all successful bankers and lawyers whatever being really really silly on stage kind of more so than i think even the king singers let themselves be um and it was so endearing and so wonderful and i thought that that was actually kind of part of the joy of what we do like and actually something we should embrace more is actually just being very comfortable being a, like really i mean silly but also sort of practicing not taking yourself seriously in a very very public way I think is an incredibly um uh, what it sort of brings people together I can't think what the word is but it has an incredible power to um yes, does, to bind yeah. us and and I think it's something which we don't necessarily tap into enough it's this idea of like look let's let's not be afraid to be stupid let's not be afraid to have fun and other people will have fun with you anyway i i i it's fun when you come away from things like that not expecting to learn anything and feeling like you have (laughs) it's so silly anyway i want to know i want to know how have you been doing during the lockdown how have you been keeping active what have you been eating what have you been cooking how is it affecting your work life tell me uh i've been pretty busy in the house i would say i mean it's there's a hell of a lot going on uh, yeah you know i have three, three kids and a dog yeah. to walk so i mean a, a normal day would be if i can wake up early enough to go and walk the dog um i love to go i live in um northwest london so hampstead heath is a stone's throw away uh, and the dog loves to go there we all love to go there but an early morning dog walk is great uh, at this time um uh, you know coronavirus time it can get really really busy on the heath because, yeah you know most of north london thinks i need a bit of time out i'm going to go to the heath so in some respects it can be more busy at the moment than any, than any other time so a very well, early I went, morning walk is good yeah i went um yesterday on a very long bike ride i mean i live in at the top of brick lane as you know and i i've done a lot of runs in my local area sort of lots to victoria park and london fields which have all been very busy but yesterday i went on a very long bike ride down to richmond park um, which is so quite away from me it's about 11 miles um mm. i couldn't actually get into the park but then i sort of on the way back went through barnes and did a walk through barnes common which i've never ever seen with any people on it whatsoever i mean it's always just completely empty and mm. it was teeming i mean it, there, were, there were i mean i would go so far as to say hundreds of people there it doesn't i don't think there's really space for 100 people there but i mean like that's the green space there and so that's where people go to have their out, outdoor time but it is funny isn't it like in, in these moments suddenly these huge expanses of green are becoming very, very crowded and you didn't realise that was possible. Exactly. So uh, it's so nice to go out there, though, I have to say. And um, I think the air quality is very nice. I don't know if you know it's in London because oh, people yeah. aren't driving around. It's wonderful. The, the I, I was looking Yeah, I was looking up at the... Uh, very near us, I was at the top of Bishopsgate. If you look down towards the city, you can see all of the big skyscrapers. And last night I was just admiring how clearly I could see each of them. There was like There was no smog at all crystal clear mm-hmm. exactly and um uh, i know uh, a composer friend of mine who 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 you know judith bingham she lives quite yeah. close to you actually. And, i delivered uh, her some groceries oh did you bless you did i did you? i i delivered well she she um had a delivery and they'd replaced lots of the vegetables with weird substitutes so kind of you know leeks with samphire or something i mean it's sort of weird and so i said okay look i'll I'll go and I'll go and buy you your things, and it's actually yeah. it's a very very nice way of like meaningfully and and permissibly connecting with people. You know what I mean? Like that's definitely allowed. Yeah, I and mean, she'd be very much enjoying the fact that the air quality is better at the moment. Yes, exactly. And, um, so that's that's very nice. Otherwise, you know, my two boys are fourteen, and one in particular is a cricket nut. So yeah. our back garden is not quite big enough to have a proper proper sort of um, cricket 
wicket, but there's a lot of bowling and batting and balls over other gardens and yeah, great going on, which is good. Um, the weather's been so good, so there's been gardening, there's been a bit of barbecuing, there's been a lot of house cleaning, a dog and five people. So I've got a question. So, you know, um, I've yeah. got a question for and you, which is, so I live with, as you know, with an American, and yeah. uh, what we call barbecue in England and what they call barbecue in the States are kind of radically different things. Yeah. Not, not in terms of concept. I mean, it's, it's meat grilled over usually coal, um, but um, that's, I mean, like you can do barbecue in an oven, of course. Have, do you have any familial disagreements when it comes to barbecuing or what constitutes barbecue? Or do you, is, I mean, I don't even know, is, is there kind of Vermont barbecue? <laughs> Not really, but the, the problem we're having at the moment is that we, we did used to have a, a gas grill and it's so yeah. easy as you need to go out there, get the fish on or get some halloumi grilled Lovely. or anything like that, you know, um, and it fell apart. So currently we have the old, you know, just ch charcoal on a quite a small barbecue yeah. and it's pretty rubbish. We need an upgrade. And so actually I get a bit grumpy about it because it's such a rubbish barbecue actually. Oh, that's so um, funny. And it's, it's, um, it basically only really does meat, sausages, burgers, and that's it before, you know, the whole thing is on fire or whatever, you know, I just can't really control it properly. So we need to get ourselves another a, a gas grill to do, I guess what Americans call grilling rather than having a barbecue. I yeah. Think there's a bit well, of a cultural difference there. You're all right. Yeah. Because the, when, when I talk about having a barbecue, exactly. My, my kind of heritage is just kind of burgers or sausages, maybe a chicken breast if you're lucky on chicken breast, even chicken thighs, chicken wings on, on a barbecue outside. I mean, that, and that's the extent, a sort of white baps or rolls, maybe with sesame yes. seeds from a supermarket, packet bought coleslaw. And then if you talk, so Jesse's from Missouri and so Kansas City barbecue, for instance, it's like, it's, it's a full cuisine. If you think about the, the amount of sauce, the sort of the number of sauces and spices and flavorings and the way that you can prepare things, it's, it's much more of an art form. So we made proper, um, kind of sweet pulled chicken and some real kind of smoked bacony barbecuey beans last week and it's absolutely delicious but in my head of course I mean it is barbecue but it's not at all barbecue like a, a barbecue is a slightly sorry affair where everyone brings them into a carny vegan sausages and sort of hopes that they're fine outdoor so it's yeah that's 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 a funny thing where like the nomenclature doesn't quite map onto like our expectations of, of what a barbecue is this time of year we don't have any outside space of course so we have to do it all inside and um i don't know if you have this as well do you have a gas or an electric oven inside yes which one do you have no electric we have gas hob yeah oh, you gas have a top. gas hob yeah, yeah gas so yeah, because that's another bone of contention in our household. The, the fact that the, an electric oven with an electric top just gives you no control whatsoever. You think yes, about these amazing, gas big electric, American yeah. gas gas stoves, gas yeah. ovens. Yeah. I, I, even I now want one and I'm not a cook. Yeah, you do need that. I mean, my, my wife, Christina, she's an amazing cook and loves to express herself through cooking, um, amongst other things. So we have a lot of cooking going on mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, if you find flour, buy it, and then, you know, things you can cook with. So there's been a lot of baking going on in the, in these days. Um, the kids love to uh, try their hand as well in baking. So there's a lot of food. There has been a lot of food. And of course, it's been Easter. Um, my daughter, Bess, had a birthday. So there's been a lot of stuff, a lot of cooking. Was there, was there a lot of chocolate over the weekend? There was not as much as usual, actually, but there, there certainly was. Yeah, I treated myself to one pack of mini eggs yesterday, and that was my kind of well done. tribute tribute to Easter. Well, quite funnily, you talk about if you can find flour, buy it. So you might have seen I'm, I'm holding a, a, a coffee from what looks like a coffee shop. It's because it is from a coffee shop. My local one at the end of our street, so just on the Bethnal Green Road, um, is normally just a coffee shop with seat, tables inside and sells pastries, whatever. In order to stay open now, it, it sort of has has to now provide well, to have provisions for people who who are having to cook at home so suddenly it sells flour and gluten-free flour and lots of types of bread and eggs and tinned goods so it's allowed to stay open nonetheless they're very nervous every day that someone's going to come and shut them down um mm. because because technically they're not a supermarket 
But every oh. time I've gone, and I've, I, like the police vans often park outside, I think, oh God, they're gonna close Holy Shot. And um, lo and behold, there's like eight to 10 policemen and women all just queuing up to get their coffees. <laughs> then, then going out, then going out to tell people to stop socialising outside on what Victoria Park or something. But I just love the idea that, like, no, actually, you are an essential service for all of the policemen who are having to get everyone else to stay inside. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I can't remember the last time I had a flat white or a coffee with milk in it. You know, I'll example. deliver. I'll deliver you one if you like. They, so, they, yeah. I mean, we also down the road we have a pub that um, is a very good food pub, and they've diversified. It's now a kind of indoor farmers market. Um, so with the flour and some of their best dishes they still cook in the kitchens and they have them available for you to buy and take home they make you can make you, you can buy dough bread dough and just take it home and just bake the dough to make like, your fresh bread have um, you been making bread at home yeah a little bit yeah yeah have you ever bit. attempted sourdough yeah well mrs tyson is um yeah she's been on a course for it you know I, I, and actually oh. if if we give our kids what in my day, you know, would be sort of normal bread. They, they, they don't like it. You know, they're all, it, it's a sourdough family. You know, if you give yeah. them <laughs> we're, not sourdough, we are a or sourdough not family. Or not proper bread. They like turn their nose up at it. You know, which that's is, so you know, NW. <laughs> I, guess, I guess where we are, I guess where we are these days. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, all of my all of my friends on the various WhatsApp groups from uni or school are like, you know, comparing sourdough starters and whether they're going to actually create something of any value. I didn't know what a sourdough starter was. I thought it was some horrific innuendo that I wasn't understanding. And lo and behold, it is, it is some. It's like it's, it's. I think it's like kombucha, isn't it? Like it's something that kind of continually ferments and then you just kind of take yes. bits off it and then. I, I should know I've more. Seen a, an, another a former king singer with his with his. He's got four little jars. Um, he put yeah. on his social media, sort of his, you know, the, the growing family okay. <laughs> of his four jars. Yeah, it's very funny. Oh, God, I, I feel like I've put on about 50 pounds over there. I mean, I'm doing lots of exercise, lots of running, lots of cycling, but I don't usually have to create so much food. I mean, whether it's assembly or cooking, I don't usually have to prepare so much of my own food. And I'm, I'm this far from the kitchen. The kitchen's behind me. Like it, mm. it feels, it's an hour and a half between trips to the kitchen feels like a very very long time so you can very easily end up eating i don't know three very large meals and three very large snacks a day <laughs> and only moving a meter behind me to exercise if i'm doing I don't know, a bar class or something so I, it, that's something i'm having to to practice slightly more mindful eating which is something i'm really really bad at yeah are we looking into the idea about getting a, a bicycle that you can do spin class you know, you know oh the, what a peloton what, yeah exactly yeah oh i've got i've got friends who've got a peloton i uh, you know you know i'm a spinning you know i'm a spinning addict yeah um, so my studio is hopefully they they sent out an email not last week but the end of the week before saying that if you'd uh, like to rent one we'll we'll rent them out to you for this much a month and you'll get free classes online um i i where the hell it's gonna go i've got no idea but not that big though, are they? I was looking at them. Then, then they're not quite as big as I thought yeah. they were. Anyway, but well, no, the pelotons are really, really um, space efficient, um, yeah. and yeah. and great. And there, there's more on a peloton. Like if you are a subscriber, you can do more than just the bike classes. You can do all of the yoga and various other things. That means you've got, you've got a, like a well-rounded fitness proposition. I think is what they would oh, call right. it, yeah. <laughs> which is what we're all looking for, isn't it? Yeah. I certainly yeah. feel well-rounded. Are you listening? <laughs> as a, I've I've discovered the joys of British folk music over the last couple of weeks. I Laura Marling released a wonderful new album last week. What have you been listening to? Uh, this morning already, I've been listening to uh, a massive playlist that was that I that I discovered from Talis Scholars. Um, and massive. Okay, good. I'll, I'll do the same. I think, I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, um, but it looks like it's almost all of their CDs in one playlist, which I haven't, which I haven't, which I haven't seen before on Spotify. So I, I'm a little bit like, oh, oh yes, I've, oh, I love that. Um, and um, to keep me guessing, I've had it on um, on shuffle play. So you might go from Western Wind Mass of Taverna to a little bit of Spanish music back to some English yeah. 18th century. So, um, but then a bit of Morales and then Obrecht and some of the Flemish guys. So I, I, yes, yeah, so I'm enjoying that a lot. 
Um, you know, I listen to all kinds of music all the time. So uh, a lot of Bach over Easter time, Bach, yeah. Mahler, I mean, English folk. I mean, my family, like, there's usually jazz on on the Sonos downstairs in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, just general, g- general jazz. We listen to WQXR a lot, the New oh. York radio station, which is absolutely yeah. brilliant station. I, well, you know, we're, we know we're one of their 20 for 20 artists this year. Yeah, so good, good yeah, for yeah. you. So, well, I, it is good for us, although we've got to work out when the hell we could do something with them. Um, so what do you do? You're going to go to the green space and do other stuff? Yeah, well, provisionally, provisionally, there's the idea of doing that either in the summer or, or it's sort of in June, July or in December. We, we've had everything, so everything obviously in March was cancelled. Everything, bar two concerts, has been cancelled in May so far. I'm mm-hmm. imagining they will both go, but I... You know, like you could only work as at the rate of the presenter. In June, um, in the second half of June, I think from August the August, from June the sixteenth, nothing's left our diary yet. Um, and we go through to the first of August, which is when our summer holiday starts. So oh, I, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm not holding my breath. I mean, like it would be very lovely for. September to the end of the year to happen. It would be really, I mean, it's Schleswig Holstein in July. I mean, like, it's all these things which we love so much. Yes. Um, uh, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not holding my breath uh, for that. I think what's what's interesting is, and I've said this to a few people, because we're such a small, portable group, um, when we're part of a larger festival and they cancel the festival, that's one thing. But when it's individual bookings, I, a part of me is wondering whether they're holding out slightly longer for us because it's very easy to cancel us. You know, we're not an orchestra which needs 300, 300 rooms in a hotel and five days of rehearsal. You, we kind of we just drop in and drop out. So there, there are certain things where I think they're likely to be cancelled, but we won't find out till later because people will be trying to hold on to what they can. Um, yeah. But we're yeah, we're just. I've yeah, always thought I mean, that about the King Singers. It's very lucky because it's only six members, um, yeah. and um, it's a it's a banker for festivals and promoters and so on um, to get bums on seats. And so in that sense, it's kind of a recession proof group. I've always thought. You know, I, I think it, when I went through the King Singers, there was you know th- that generation's recession was going on. Nine Eleven happened as well. You know, so but yeah. I think you know, the group did reasonably well where other people were falling a bit more by the wayside and that i think that's because it's only six flights there's only six hotels um but it's also and and and, and good shows you know good entertaining shows oh well (laughs) that that was the quality back then that's the difference here Ah, come on (laughs) uh, but um no i think um what's interesting as well is that we're i think i hope we're quite easy to reschedule you know, if it's a big opera run, you can't just be like, oh yeah, there are those three months free next January. No, of course, because they've been filled for years. But if you're looking for a single date, so there's part of me which is hoping that like we can we can do some of these concerts sooner rather than later. And we, you know, obviously we want to try and be really environmentally conscious and sustainable. And we were talking about how clean the air is. Like we don't want to suddenly just do crazy flying in order to accommodate all these things. But actually, um, a lot of what we were doing at the moment was pretty coordinated so we can sort of like wholesale lift patches and say like can you just sort of fit us fit it around you know next may june similar sort of time actually does it just mean that next year is going to be really busy (laughs) where this year is not quite so busy i don't know um what i really want and i hope I, i want someone to 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 let me know like when we are able to find a piece of technology where people can rehearse in real time over yes. video it's like it's the most infuriating thing because it feels like we're having a conversation now with no time delay like yeah. this is this is this is how we would talk normally and yet as soon as you put six people singing the lag feels outrageous and also it it prefers certain voices over others so you never have things like balance um as the the day when you are able to rehearse remotely is the day that this all changes forever i think ah that's true although you know i can remember king singers rehearsals where there was very, very little singing and it was all chit chat, all talking. I so mean, in that, that sense, the six of you could get on the screen and just talk. You could say, okay, well, let's get our copy of name of piece, you know, and then talk it through. But I guess a lot of that was this, this happened the last time we did it, or this happened yesterday, 
or last week. Yeah. You don't want to sing it again, just, uh, Robin, can you make sure you don't sing flat there? Or can you... <laughs> And, <laughs> it gets even incredibly brutal. You can do it as a social media yeah. exercise and just agree yeah. in advance yeah. to completely yeah. demolish someone. Yeah. And you've always been way too loud then. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. You know. um, and there's a little bit of, the, you know, the tennis, the kind of, yeah. um, I was only loud there because you were, you know, you you taking a breath that you said you were never going to take three years ago, and you've taken a breath every time for the last three years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. you said, this idea of like, um, what, what do we call it? Uh, criticism tennis, exactly. It's like, it's like, yeah, so it doesn't always need to be back to the other person as well. It's just like, oh, oh, and by the way, you, and then it's, it's always, there's one person at the end who just doesn't care enough, who, who always gets the final comment. And so it could, it could seem very, very unbalanced, but yeah. So, so silly. I remember like people coming, can we have exclusive access to a King Sings rehearsal? We'd love to hear you guys in rehearsal. And then it's literally so boring because it's just talking. Yeah, no, we, we've had the same thing. And so we've, we've actually started, usually when we invite people to rehearsal, we'll say, come for the last half an hour. So we'll be like, okay, well, we do need to sing something in advance of this concert. So like, we'll, we'll, we'll save the singing to the end. <laughs> so they can actually, and we'll just like sing some things through. Um, Are you yeah, singing no, now? Are you missing singing? Uh, I am. Um, I've done. I've taken part in a few distance things. Um, mm. So th there was a there's a John Passion that Dan Norman's putting together through Oxford Park, which is on. Have you seen it? It's on YouTube. It's a sort of I've Ronnie Williams and stuff. Part. I've seen the first part. Yeah. 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 So good. we've Thank we've you. contributed to chorales and um. then su and then also sung with some of the bigger ones, like the big final chorale and a couple of ones yeah. in the middle. Um, and we're doing, um, and so it goes with the stay at home choir. So we've recorded ourselves performing. And so it goes individually. Um, it's quite weird singing along to a recording, a live recording from, I can't, it must've been a couple of months ago. Um, and, and being really, really, <laughs> suddenly becoming hypercritical of this one performance, which like in things that no one would ever heard. Also, when you have to listen back to yourself singing in a kind of King singer's way, isolated in videos yes. oh god why would anyone ever pay to listen to this at all <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway so that that that's all been done so and i think everyone from the stay-at-home choir submitted their stuff so we'll see that very very soon i i am missing it um what i um i think i'm benefiting from i mean you know i had vocal surgery over new year and uh, i did have time to recover um, but then I did, I mean, relatively quickly had to go back into full-time singing. And so the, the process of recovery has been good, um, really good actually, but um, I think I would have benefited from even more time of just being really, really quiet. And so having essentially like now, or essentially now four months off, yeah. and, and what I noticed is just like how quickly my upper register comes back. Uh -huh. Kind of singing, singing Fs and things, uh, Fs and F sharps. I mean, I'm a, I am a low bass. This, this is not, this is not stuff that's normally there. Um, maybe I'm not a low bass. Maybe I just sing too much. Um, I also wonder. Like, I usually do so many spin classes, which of course involves kind of panting and maybe drying your throat. And so, the absence of that, I wonder whether that has an impact. Um, yeah. But I, I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure yeah, and, and that's hard, right? You know, it's finding the balance of things that are good for your body versus things which are good for your voice and good for your mind. I mean, that's good for my well-being. But I, yeah, I, I do, I do miss singing. I know that I'll come back to singing. You know, that there are certain things which people, you know, certain losses which are forever during this. People who are having to close down businesses. I mean, obviously, they're the very serious ones that people die, of course. But like businesses folding. Um, or um you know festivals not happening like these i know that we're going to perform again soon so i don't feel so so worried about it um also we're like we're having me i mean we're technically on our easter holidays now so we weren't meant to be giving concerts this week or next week or last week so we're actually meeting more than we would normally at this time usually it's a kind of a carte blanche not carte blanche like what's the word i want like um it's just like a blanket rule like we don't really make contact during these weeks because we see each other so much Course, otherwise yeah. and now you now we're yeah yeah so that's that's a bit of, it, there must be some business um considerations as well i mean you know the way that your business is set up i mean you probably will want to get in touch with each other and just yeah have a, 
you know, just see how the, how the world yeah. is today, and how <laughs> much that might impact your business. Well, it's also yeah. like you know, how can we how can we respond positively to this? Like you know, that we were we were already thinking about you know how how what programming we want to do and. I and mean, our programming for next season is basically done, but for the year after, but how can we, you know, Finding Harmony was all about like what's happening in the world right now and how can we try and make it a bit of a better place through what we do. And I think we can look at this situation the same way and see like, you know, how can we look for the positives in this? How can we look to other times in history where people have emerged from exile or isolation and seen like what flourishing there's been? Like, so there's, there are exciting things happening and there's exciting planning happening. I mean, we've never been so far ahead with like planning recordings and stuff. We're like, we've kind of blocked our time in early 23. I mean, I have, will I be alive in 2023? I have no idea. I mean, it's so far in the future. Um, of course you will. But and like, I, it's, I, it, it is nice to have all those, but this time to reflect. Um, what I miss from, uh, what I do now compared with my time in the King Sing is I really miss thinking time. You know, yeah. oh, it's another, it's another aeroplane. Uh, you know, it's another flight. Yeah. It's another. Um, but actually, now the only time I really have to think is perhaps when I'm on my way to work, which I work in Old Street. You know, or, or there's there's things coming from all sides. Can you do this? Can you do that? What's happening here? Well, there's very little time to think, and um, the time now provides a lot of thinking time. So that's really nice to be able to plan ahead, to plan, yeah, um, to plan strategy, to plan programs, to plan recordings, to look at what you're doing, to read poetry. If you're thinking yeah. about commissioning, like think, you know, work with composers as I do, um, asking, you know, what they're what they're going to be doing ahead of time, what they what what they're what they're reading, who who they might want to be in touch with. This is the time. I mean, I mean, of course, there's horrible things happening, but the, the positives are definitely there. You know, we, yeah. and we have to seek the positives. It's a critical time for music, as you know, and musicians. Um, but those um, people who can get through it will come out stronger, I'm sure. Um, I think if you ask anybody who's stuck at home, what are they doing? They're, lo they're looking at Netflix, they're looking at TV, they're looking at Spotify. Uh, and all have of those people are the freelancers who are now at home wondering whether they're going to survive and actually if people would just would just care to realize that they sort of keeping themselves going by looking at the work of these people who who, who need supporting in the future so yeah. there are lots of positive things going on yeah no i agree I've, I've been watching and reading a huge amount it's um there's kind of a lot of book clubs that have emerged at this time um yeah. And, and a lot of a lot of the books that seem to be on those book clubs are about people who have emerged from tragedy or calamity in some way. Um, I've read one called The Sun Does Shine, which is about a man called Anthony Ray Hinton, who was finally released from death row after 30 years on it as an innocent man in Alabama. Um, one called American Dirt, which is a, I mean, it's a novel, it's fiction, but it's about a woman escaping cartel violence in Mexico and starting a new life in America. Um, I'm about to start a book called Educated by Tara Westover, which is all about a girl who flees a very, very kind of fundamentalist family, fundamentalist Mormon family in Utah, and went, ended up going to Cambridge. And uh, yes, yeah, it's... it's yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's yeah. like, yeah. I've, I've only read a tiny bit so far, but I've watched a few um, few interviews with her. And it's like, it's remarkable because it's, it's like, you know, all of these things, the, under, and the undercurrent is like, there is there is a bright future on the other side. You just have to believe you're going to get there. Um, and so it's, I mean, like I, I am, um, I also just read Unorthodox. I don't know if you've seen on Netflix, there's this show Unorthodox about a girl who uh, flees a, a very Hasidic Jewish um, family in Williamsburg. And the, it's interesting because the book and the, the, the TV series focus on different elements. The book is a, an autobiography and it talks about her kind of up until the point basically where she's left the faith um and she does eventually go to berlin but it takes a slightly different story whereas in the, the tv series it's a fictional story about the girl kind of dramatically running away from her family in williamsburg to go to berlin to try and find a new life so it's not it's they're not they're not exactly the same story but they they focus on two sides of like 
you know, one, what is it like to deal with an oppressive life? And what's it suddenly like then to be in a free world, having only known that? Um, and yeah, like, there's just so much literature like that was just so good at the moment. I think that, um, yeah, we, we need, to, I mean, I've never been a big reader. I've read a, a lot, but I've never kind of voraciously read. And mm. it's, it's lovely just to think, okay, like now is the time, embrace it and do it. And actually when you do it, how much you get out of it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I mean, I've always found it a bit difficult to really get stuck into a book and read quickly. Um, I, I move from one thing to another more often than not. And I have this thing about maps as well. So I've got a lot of map books. I just open a oh. map and just look at a map. Like have I shown map. you? Can I add one, of, one, of my apps, one of my absolute favorite books that I have in my home. Just hold on. Yeah. Oh, right. Let me see if I can get it out quickly. It is this one here. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Transit maps of the world. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And it's got... And, and like it's so funny for like you know so they're, they're artistically beautiful like glasgow is just this ring yes. right uh, and then you've got like Wuppertal, which is the only monorail public transport system in the oh, world yes, which has been the, course. have you there's there's an amazing i mean it's actually a very sad story but of an elephant who fell from the monorail and i think died while it was being transported as a kind of showpiece in Wuppertal in the 1930s i like, I kind of want someone to write a piece of music about it because it's so absurd. But it's like, it's a real tragedy of this elephant. I, what was it called? Okay, I'm, while you're talking, I'm just going to Google it. Elephant. It's, it, this is the kind of thing that should be a Google bang, you know, when you only get one result. Elephant monorail Wuppertal. But anyway, uh, yeah, Tuffy. Tuffy was a female circus elephant that became famous in Germany during 1950 when she accidentally fell from the Wuppertal Schwebebahn into the river Wuppertal underneath. Um, oh, dear. It was a publicity stunt that went horribly wrong. I mean, like, <laughs> it's, I, I can't laugh, but it's terrible. That. Yeah, yeah, there really should. That's like a story worth telling. Yeah. Bear well, that in mind, Robin. We'll have, a, we'll have another conversation. <laughs> what's on the, what's on, the, the uh, on your kind of timetable for today? So today uh, is, a, is a work day, actually. So I'm, yep. I'm, I'm working at home and... Um, you know, work at the moment is a lot of Zoom meetings yeah. um, and connecting with people, um, um, whether it be a kind of lunch, uh, a kind of coffee break, half an hour to see to see people yeah. who are working at home. Um, a lot of people really appreciate that if they're living at home mm -hmm. um, by themselves. Um, I've, I have a lot of people I can talk to all the time, but it's nice to connect with work colleagues to see how they're all going make yeah. sure they're all okay and if they have any needs or blah 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 um otherwise it's you know i'm talking to uh composer alec roth a little bit later today which i'm looking forward to great right. deal. Uh, he's a lovely chap and then there's other um people i've i've uh, to speak to i've spoken to a former king singer this morning to say hello oh um, brilliant to, to, to mr tim wainwright say hello to him oh goodness um, so um with his family chirping away in the background. Oh God, I, I, um, I've still not met Ella, so they're just, they're, they're, I, need to, I need to catch up with the whole brood now that there is a whole brood. Yeah. I also saw on Facebook this morning, Bruiser's wife, who you're going to tell me what her name is now. Liz, yeah, yeah. They, they did some singing. Yeah. Um, she's got a lovely voice. Well, I, I will tell her. Beautiful. Well, we're, 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 all, we're all making, my, mine is on its way this week. We're all trying to do a bit of funny music from home. Yeah, um, the barbershop thing. Well, yeah, so and I'm obviously horribly self-conscious. So I, I've been delaying it and delaying it and delaying it, but I am going to do something. Oh, good. I think you I should. I promise. I'm to that. And yeah. See who, who gets the more likes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to set my whole press team on it. I'm going to make sure I win. <laughs> Oh, it's been so nice to catch up. We're going to have to have another conversation, aren't we? About let's let's have a worky conversation at some point over the next over yeah. the next week or so. There's, there there are things to talk about. Elephant an elephant important. shaped an elephant shaped hole in your programming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really think that no one's programmed that before. We also do so much work in that area. You can make a real tour of the Ru the Ruger beef, couldn't you? Like that would be, yeah. Wow. I, I the, mean, the animal program. I can hear it now. 
Uh, the end of the coming one by one. <laughs> there, that's your barbershop. There we are. There we yeah. are. You have to do it too. Listen, have a Should great day. All right. Thanks. So Lovely fun to talk. Yeah. Okay. Let's see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.